How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the Elite performances and matchups from yesterday, um, Wednesday, March 3rd. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that goes on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time. Um, with NFL, with the NFL season being over until September and the baseball season, the MLB not starting until next month, I'm going to get right into it, starting with the NBA, starting with last night's primetime performances, starting in Philadelphia, the best team in the East hosted the best team in the West as the Philadelphia 76ers were able to beat the Utah Jazz 131 to 123 in overtime off of some late game heroics from Joel Embiid hitting a three pointer um, that would send the game into overtime they would end up just outscoring the jazz uh, 13 to 5 in order to pick up their 24th win of the season and probably their biggest win of the season for the utah jazz in this matchup their elite starting center rudy gobert would finish with 12 points nine rebounds four assists and two steals in 38 minutes as he shot four for 10 from the field and four for six from the free throw line. He also had five personal fouls on the night. And their leading score was their elite starting shooting guard, Donovan Mitchell, who also had five fouls in 42 minutes. He finished with 33 points, eight rebounds, and six assists as he shot 12 for 34 from the field, five for 12 from three, and four for six from the line. For the Philadelphia 76ers in this matchup, uh, their elite starting point guard, Ben Simmons, would finish with 17 points, four rebounds, six assists, and five turnovers in 42 minutes as he shot eight for 11 from the field and one for two from the free throw line. Their starting power forward, Tobias Harris, would finish with 22 points and 10 rebounds in 38 minutes as Harris shot nine for 18 from the field and four for five from the free throw line. And their leading scorer will be their elite starting center, Joel Embiid out of Kansas, who finished with 40 points, 19 rebounds, and three assists as well as two blocks in 40 minutes so 40 points in 40 minutes still mad impressive as he shot 14 for 27 from the field two for five from three and 10 for 13 from the free throw line with this win the philadelphia 76ers are 24 and 12 they are still holding on to the best record in the eastern conference as they now sit half a game ahead of the brooklyn nets as the Sixers have won their last two games, they've won six of their last 10. And then with this loss, the Jazz still sit at the top of the Western Conference. Um, as with their second game in a row that they've lost, they still sit three games ahead of the second place Phoenix Suns um, in the conference. Uh, really quickly, looking out to what's going on with the other primetime performance of the night in or at least another big matchup uh, in Portland. The Portland Trailblazers hosted the Golden State Warriors. And in this one, the Portland Trailblazers would end up beating the Warriors 108 to 106. Thanks to a go-ahead step-back three-pointer from Damian Lillard to give the Portland Trailblazers the two-point lead they needed to get their twenty to get their 20th win of the season. For the Golden State Warriors in this matchup, of course, their leading scorer would be their goaded starting point guard, Stephen Curry, who finished with 35 points, seven rebounds, five assists, and three steals in 36 minutes as Curry shot 13 for 28 from the field, five for 14 from three, and four for five from the free throw line. And for the Portland Trail Blazers, um, off the bench, their future Hall of Fame power forward, Carmelo Anthony, would finish with 22 points, uh, in 32 minutes, as he shot 8 for 13 from the field, 2 for 6 from 3, and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. And the leading score, also tied with him for the team high in points, would be their elite starting point guard, Damian Lillard, who finished with 22 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 5 turnovers in 36 minutes. As Lillard shot 6 for 17 from the field, 3 for 10 from 3, and 7 for 8 from the free throw, from the free throw line. With this win, the Portland Trail Blazers are currently 20 and 14. They have the fifth best record in the Western Conference, and with this, their set and with their two-game winning streak, they are currently sitting two and a half games behind the fourth place, or or I guess the third place Los Angeles Clippers and the fourth place reigning champs Los Angeles Lakers. They also sit half a game ahead of the sixth place San Antonio Spurs and the seventh place Denver Nuggets um, um, with this win as well as they've won six of their last 10. And with this loss, the Golden State Warriors are now 19 and 17 as they now hold the ninth best record in the Western Conference. And with this two game losing streak and, lose, and winning five of their last 10, they now currently sit tied with the Dallas Mavericks who currently hold the eighth place spot, even though the Warriors have one more win and one more loss. They currently sit a game and a half behind the 6th place Spurs and the 7th place Denver Nuggets, and they also sit half a game ahead of the 10th place Memphis Grizzlies. 
Um, and that's what the West is looking like really quickly. Jumping out to Sacramento, the Sacramento Kings host of the defending champions, Los Angeles Lakers, without LeBron James or Anthony Davis. And in this one, the Sacramento Kings would beat the Lakers 123 to 120 after outscoring the Lakers by four in the final quarter. For the Lakers in this matchup, they're starting small forward out of Utah. Kyle Kuzma would finish with 25 points and 13 rebounds in 34 minutes as Kuzma shot 10 for 20 from the field. Off the bench, the reigning NBA Sixth Man of the Year, Montrez Harrell, would finish with 26 points and 12 rebounds in 33 minutes as he shot 13 for 22 from the field. And their leading scorer will be their starting point guard out of Germany as Dennis Schroeder would finish with 28 points and 9 assists in 34 minutes as he shot 11 for 20 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3, and 4 for 5 from the line. For the Sacramento Kings in this matchup, their starting small forward out of UNC, Harrison Barnes, would finish with 20 points and 6 assists in 38 minutes as he shot 6 for 13 from the field and 8 for 9 from the free throw line. Their starting point guard out of Kentucky, Darren Fox, would finish with 23 points, 8, re- or eight assists, and 3 steals, as well as 7 turnovers. And he also fouled out in 36 minutes as he shot 9 for 18 from the field um, and 4 for 6 from the free throw line. And their leading scorer would be their starting shooting guard, Buddy Heald, who finished with 29 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists in 42 minutes as he shot 11 for 15 from the field and 7 for 11 from three with this win the sacramento kings are currently sitting at 14 and 21 which ties them with the okc thunder for the third worst record in the western conference um as they have only won two of their last 10 games they currently sit four and a half games behind the eighth place mavericks and ninth place warriors on the playoff picture on the outside looking in as they currently trailed the first place utah jazz by 12 and a half points in the west And with this loss, the Los Angeles Lakers, the defending champs, are now sitting with the fourth best record in the, or they're tied with the Clippers for the third best record in the West, um, as both teams are 24 and 13. The Lakers are currently sitting half a game behind the second place Phoenix Suns as they have lost their last two games and seven of their last 10. And then... Jumping out to what else was going on outside of the primetime matchups from last night, jumping to Cleveland. The Cleveland Cavaliers hosted their division rivals, the Indiana Pacers, and in this one, the Pacers would beat the Cavaliers 114 to 111 after outscoring the Cavs by 11 points in the fourth quarter and able to come away with their 16th win of the season. For the Cleveland Cavaliers in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their starting point guard, Colin Sexton, out of Alabama, who finished with 32 points and 10 assists, as well as three steals and six turnovers in 43 three minutes. Sexton shot 12 for 25 from the field, two for five from three, and a perfect six for six from the line. For the Indiana Pacers, their leading scorer will be their starting point guard, Malcolm Brogdon, who finished with 29 points, um, two steals, and five turnovers in 35 minutes as he shot 12 for 15 from the field, a perfect three for three from three, and two for three from the free throw line. With this win, the Indiana Pacers are 16 and eight. That is the ninth best record in the Eastern Conference, tied with the Chicago Bulls, as they have won four of their last 10. Um, They currently sit half a game behind the sixth place Miami Heat, the seventh place Charlotte Hornets, and the eighth place Toronto Raptors. I'm, I'm just on the outside of the playoff picture looking in. And they currently sit seven full games behind the first place Philadelphia 76ers. With this loss, the Cleveland Cavaliers are 14 and 22, as they currently hold the third worst record in the Eastern Conference, as they currently sit three and a half games out of the playoff picture, and they have lost six of their last 10. Uh, Jumping out to Philadelphia, I'm sorry, jumping out to Tampa, the Toronto Raptors hosted the Detroit Pistons as the Pistons were able to pick up their 10th win of the season by by beating the Raptors 129 to 105 after outscoring the Raptors by a total of 15 points in the second half. For the Raptors in this matchup, their starting their elite starting point guard Kyle Lowry would finish with 21 points, 4 rebounds and 6 assists in 35 minutes as he shot 5 for 11 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3 and 8 for 9 from the free throw line and their leading scorer would be their starting shooting guard Norman Powell who finished with 36 points and 5 rebounds in 38 minutes as Powell shot 14 for 20 from the field, 5 for 8 from 3 and a perfect 3 for 3 from the line. And for the Detroit Pistons in this matchup, Um, Their shooting guard off the bench, Rodney Magruder, would finish with 20 points, 5 assists, and 2 steals. Um, Their point guard, Saban Lee, would off the bench would also finish with 20 points as he had 7 assists in um, 21 minutes played as he shot 8 for 11 from the field and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Detroit Pistons would be their starting shooting guard, Wayne Ellington, who finished with 25 points in 26 minutes, shooting 8 for 11 from the field, all of his attempts coming from the 3-point line. So he he went 8 for 11 from 3 and he made his only free throw of the night. 
With this win, the Detroit Pistons are now 10-25 and 25, as they are now the last team in the Eastern Conference to get double-digit wins. The only team now remaining with single-digit wins so far are the Minnesota Timberwolves. But also with this win, the Pistons have now won four of their last 10. They currently sit seven games out of the playoff picture as they are sitting 13 and a half games behind the first place 76ers. And with this loss, the Toronto Raptors are now 17 and 18, which ties them with the Hornets in the Heat for the sixth best record in the Eastern Conference. Um, as they have won five of their last 10, they currently sit half a game ahead of the ninth place Indiana Pacers and the 10th place Chicago Bulls who are on the outside looking in. Um, jumping to uh, Orlando. The Orlando Magic hosted the Atlanta Hawks, and in this matchup, the Hawks would pick up a 115-112 to win after outscoring the Magic by 15 points in the fourth quarter and coming back down from a six, from what was made probably a 15-16 point deficit halfway through the quarter and able to pull off their 16th win of the season. For the Orlando Magic in this matchup, their starting point guard, former Rookie of the Year, Michael Carter-Williams, would finish with 20 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals in 34 minutes as he shot 7 for 12 from the field, a perfect 2 for 2 from 3, and a perfect 4 for 4 from the line. Their starting shooting guard, Terrence Ross, would finish with 28 points and 5 rebounds in 41 minutes as he shot 9 for 17 from the field, 4 for 9 from 3, and a perfect 6 for 6 from the line. And the leading scorer for the Orlando Magic would be their two-time All-Star starting center, Nikola Vucevic, who finished with 29 points and 9 rebounds in 36 minutes as he shot 10 for 21 from the field and a perfect 7 for 7 from the free throw line. For the Atlanta Hawks in this matchup, their starting power forward, Danilo Gallinari, would finish with 23 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals in 39 minutes as Gallo shot 8 for 18 from the field, 5 for 10 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the line. And the leading score for the Atlanta Hawks, would be their elite starting point guard, Trey Young, who finished with 32 points, four rebounds, eight assists, and two steals in 35 minutes as he shot nine for 19 from the field, uh, four for seven from three, and he would go on to shoot 10 for 11 from the free throw line. With this win, the Atlanta Hawks are now 16 and 20. That is the fifth worst record in the Eastern Conference. Um, as they have won their last two games, they have won five of their last 10. They currently sit a game and a half behind the sixth place Heat, seventh place Hornets, and eighth place Toronto Raptors outside of the playoff picture, as they currently trail the first place Sixers by eight total games. And with this loss, the Orlando Magic are 13 and 23, holding on to the second worst record in the Eastern Conference. This is the fifth straight game that they've lost. They've lost six of their last 10, as they currently sit it four and a half games out of the playoff picture looking in jumping out to houston the houston rockets hosted the brooklyn nets as james harden faced off against his former team and in this game the brooklyn nets would end up beating the rockets 132 to 114 after outscoring houston by 13 points in the first half for the Houston Rockets in this matchup, their starting shooting guard, Victor Oladipo, would finish with 33 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals, as well as 2 blocks in 37 minutes, as Oladipo shot 9 for 25 from the field, 5 for 11 from 3, and 10 for 13 from the line. And the leading scorer for the Houston Rockets would be their elite starting point guard, John Wall, who finished with 36 points, 2 rebounds, and 5 assists in 41 minutes as Wall shot 12 for 30 from the field, 5 for 12 from 3, and 7 for 11 from the free throw line. For the Brooklyn Nets in this matchup, their elite starting point guard Kyrie Irving would finish with 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists in 34 minutes as he shot 9 for 21 from the field, 4 for 9 from 3, and 2 for 3 from the free throw line. And the leading score for the Brooklyn Nets would be the former Houston Rockets MVP, um, the elite shooting guard James Harden, who finished with 29 points, 10 rebounds and 14 assists as he's already in the second place in Brooklyn Nets history for triple doubles um, as he also finished with three steals and eight turnovers in 41 minutes as Harden shot 10 for 15 from the field four for eight from three and five for seven from the free throw line with this win the Brooklyn Nets are 24 and 13 that is the second best record in the Eastern Conference as they now sit half a game behind the Philadelphia 76ers they've won their last two games they've won nine of their last 10 and they also sit two games ahead of the third place Milwaukee Bucks um, in the playoff picture and with this loss the Houston Rockets are now 11 and 23 that is the second worst record in the Western Conference um, they currently now sit seven games behind the eighth place Mavericks and ninth place Warriors on the outside looking in as they've lost their last 13 games as a team. Um, and continuing on, jumping out to Minneapolis, the Minnesota Timberwolves hosted the Charlotte Hornets, and in this one, the Hornets would beat the Timberwolves 135 to 102 after outscoring the Timberwolves by 13 points in the third quarter and 11 points in the fourth, outscoring them by a total of 
27 points in the second half. For the Timberwolves in this matchup, their leading scorer will be their starting point guard out of Spain, Ricky Rubio, who finished with 20 points and 9 assists as well as 5 turnovers in 24 minutes as he shot 7 for 11 from the field, 4 for 6 from 3, and a perfect 2 for 2 from the line. And additionally for the Timberwolves, their elite starting center, Carl Anthony Towns, have finished with 16 points, 15 rebounds, and 3 assists in 32 minutes as he shot 6 for 14 from the field, 1 for 5 from 3, and 3 for 4 from the free throw line. For the Charlotte Hornets in this matchup, their starting small forward, Gordon Hayward, would finish with 23 points, 5 rebounds, 9 assists, and 5 steals in 31 minutes as Hayward shot 10 for 18 from the field and 3 for 4 from the free throw line. Their elite starting point guard, LaMelo Ball, would finish with 19 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists, as well as 2 steals as the rookie shot 7 for 13 from the field, 4 for 5 from 3, and 1 for 2 from the free throw line in 26 minutes. And the Charlotte Hornets' leading scorer would be their starting shooting guard, Terry Rozier. Um, Scary Terry finished with 31 points and three steals in 29 minutes as he shot seven, or 12 for 21 from the field, 6 for 12 from three, and he made his only free throw attempt of the night. With this win, the Charlotte Hornets are now 17-18. and 18. That is tied with the Miami Heat and the Toronto Raptors for the sixth best record in the Eastern Conference um, as they have won five of their last 10 games as a team. All three of those teams currently sit half a game behind the fifth place New York Knicks. And they also sit half a game ahead of the ninth place Indiana Pacers. So, of course, this is a very big win for the Hornets. Um, and then with this loss, the Minnesota Timberwolves are 7-29 and as they currently hold the worst record in the Western Conference. With the Pistons win, like I just said earlier, they are the only team with a single-digit amount of wins this season. Uh, they are currently on a nine-game losing streak as they are sitting 12 games out of the playoff picture and 20 full games behind the first place Utah Jazz. Jumping out to New Orleans, the New Orleans Pelicans hosted the, Char the, the Chicago Bulls. And in this game, the Bulls would end up beating the Hornets 128-124, to especially after outscoring the Hornets by 18 points in the second half. Um, and they were able to put themselves up by enough to where the New Orleans Pelicans 45 point fourth quarter would not be enough to beat them. For the Pelicans in this matchup, their elite starting shooting guard, Brandon Ingram, would finish with 21 points, three rebounds, and two assists in 25 minutes as he shot eight for 17 from the field, one for three from three, and a perfect four for four from the line. Off the bench, their shooting guard out of Duke, J.J. Redick, would finish with 22 points in 28 minutes, shooting 9 for 15 from the field and a perfect 3 for 3 from the line. And the leading scorer for the New Orleans Pelicans would be their first-time All-Star, um, their elite power forward, Zion Williamson, who would finish with 28 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals in 38 minutes as he shot 10 for 17 from the field and 8 for 16 from the free throw line. For the Chicago Bulls in this matchup, their starting point guard, Kobe White, would finish with 25 points in 33 minutes, shooting 8 for 16 from the field, 4 for 7 from the 3, and four and 5 for 5 from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Chicago Bulls would be their first-time All-Star, Zach Levine, um, as their starting shooting guard would finish with 36 points, 8 assists, and 2 steals in 35 minutes as he shot 12 for 19 from the field, 4 for 8 from 3, and a perfect 8 for 8 from the line. With this win, the Chicago Bulls are now 16 and 18, that ties them with the Indiana Pacers for the ninth best record in the Eastern Conference. Um, they've won six of their last 10 games as they currently sit half a game on the or right outside the playoff picture. Um, they currently sit seven games behind the first place 76ers. And with this loss, the New Orleans Pelicans are 15 and 20 as they currently hold on to the fifth worst record in the Western Conference. They currently sit three and a half games out of the playoff picture as they've lost six of their last 10 games. And they currently sit 11 and a half games behind the first place Utah Jazz out west. Jumping out to Dallas, the Dallas Mavericks were able to beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 87 to 78 um, after outscoring them by seven points in the third quarter, keeping that momentum going on from the first half. And they were able to secure a playoff seed. Um, or they're able to jump back into the playoff picture with this win. For the Oklahoma City Thunder, their leading scorer would be their starting shooting guard out of Kentucky, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who finished with 15 points, um, three rebounds, three assists as well in 35 minutes as he shot five for 15 from the field and four for six from the free throw line. And for the Dallas Mavericks, they are off the bench. Their small forward, Tim Hardaway Jr., would finish with 19 points, tied for the team high as he also had six rebounds in 31 minutes. 
shooting six for 15 from the field and five for six from the line and tying him for the team high in points would be their starting center, Chris Sops Porzingis, as Luka Doncic did not play. In this game, Porzingis would finish with 19 points and 13 rebounds in 34 minutes as he shot seven for 15 from the field, three for six from three and two for four from the foul line. With this win, the Dallas Mavericks are now 18 and 16 which is the eighth best record in the Western Conference um, as they sit or as they have one less win and one less loss than the Golden State Warriors at the moment. They've won their last eight. They've won their last three games. Or they've won eight of their last 10. They are currently within the playoff picture itself. They are sitting a game and a half behind the sixth place San Antonio Spurs and the seventh place Denver Nuggets. Um, and they currently sit half of a game ahead of the 10th place Memphis Grizzlies on the outside looking in. And with this loss, the Oklahoma City Thunder are 14-21, and 21, tied with the Sacramento Kings for the third worst record in the Western Conference. They've lost their last two games. They've lost six of their last 10. And they currently sit four and a half games out of the playoff picture. And they sit 12 and a half games behind the first place Utah Jazz. And then those are all the games from yesterday. Of course, those are the big ones. Looking forward to what's going on today because today is Thursday. The, the primetime games will be on TNT and this will be the last round of games before, of course, the all-star weekend in Atlanta. And at 8.30, the New Orleans Pelicans will host the Miami Heat on TNT. That will be the only game that's on primetime outside of that. At 7 o'clock, the Boston Celtics will host the Toronto Raptors and the Washington Wizards will host the Los Angeles Clippers. At 7.30, the New York Knicks will host the Detroit Pistons as the New York Knicks are holding on to a playoff spot looking pretty good compared to previous seasons. At 8 o'clock, the Indiana Pacers will host the Denver Nuggets uh, and also the Memphis Grizzlies will host the Milwaukee Bucks. At 9 o'clock, the San Antonio Spurs will host the Oklahoma City Thunder. And at 10 o'clock, the Portland Trailblazers will host the Sacramento Kings. And at the same time, the Phoenix Suns will host the Golden State Warriors in Phoenix Arena. Jumping out to college basketball to give a glance of what's going on in that setting. 10th ranked Villanova hosted 4th ranked Creighton, was able to pull off a 72-60 win behind Justin Moore's 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists. With this win, 10th ranked Villanova is 16-4 and four, as they are 11-3 in the Big East. And with this loss, 14th ranked Creighton is 17-7 and seven, as they are 13-6 and six in the Big East. Also, 11th ranked Florida State hosted unranked Boston College and the Seminoles were able to pull off a 93-64 win behind MJ Walker's 18 points. With this win, 11th ranked Florida State is 15-4 as they are 11-3 in the ACC. And with this loss, unranked Boston College is 4-14 as they are 2-10 in the ACC. And last but not least, unranked UNLV hosted 19th ranked San Diego State. And San Diego State was able to come in and win 71 to 62 behind Jordan Shackles or Jordan Shackles, 16 points and nine rebounds. With this win, 19th ranked San Diego State is 20 and four as they are 14 and three in the Mountain West. And with this loss, unranked UNLV is 11 and 13 as they are eight and nine in the Mountain West. Looking forward to what's going on today. At seven o'clock, second ranked Michigan will host unranked Michigan State on ESPN. Um, at the same time, third-ranked Baylor will host 17th-ranked Oklahoma State on ESPN2. Additionally, at the same time, sixth-ranked West Virginia will host unranked TCU on Big 12 Network. And 18th-ranked Texas Tech will host unranked Iowa State on Big 12 Network. All those games will be at 7 o'clock. At 8 o'clock, 13th-ranked Kansas will host unranked UT El Paso at, or, or at 8 o'clock on Big 12. At 9 o'clock, fifth-ranked Iowa will host unranked Nebraska on Big 10 Network. At 9 o'clock, 16th-ranked Oklahoma will host 15th-ranked Texas on ESPN. And at the same time, 24th-ranked Colorado will host unranked Arizona State on ESPN, too. Staying within the arena, but of course, shifting to the ice, jumping to the NHL. And of course, I got to lead it going in by saying that, the play, that these teams have to play within their own division because they're just to limit travel due to COVID. And of course, because the Canadian teams have to stay in Canada. Um, but of course, speaking of Canada, the Edmonton Oilers were able to host the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Maple Leafs were able to pull off a 6-1 to one win. Their left winger, Vasey, would finish with two goals, and then their center, Spezza, would finish with three assists on the day as the Toronto Maple Leafs picked up their 18th win of the season. With this win, the Maple Leafs currently hold the best record in the North Division as they sit nine points over the second-place team in that division, the Winnipeg Jets, as they are, as they are currently on a four-game winning streak. And um, really quickly, jumping out to what's going on out east, the Boston Bruins hosted the Washington Capitals, and the Capitals were able to pull off a 2-1 to win in the shootout. 
and it, it went, as they picked up their 13th win of the season. With this win, the Capitals now hold on to the best record in the East Division as they now sit two points over the second place New York Islanders um, within that division. Uh, jumping out to the Central Division. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a, uh, I'm jumping out to all the West teams because I realized the St. Louis Blues are out West. The St. Louis Blues were able to beat the Anaheim Ducks 3-2 to as they scored a goal in every single period to get their 13th win of the season. With this win, the St. Louis Blues now sit second in the, second in the division as they trail the first place Golden Knights by a point. Speaking of the Golden Knights, they were able to host and beat the Minnesota Wild 5-1 to as they scored three of their goals in the third period. Um, their goalie, Marc-Andre Fleury, would finish with 36 saves on the night as the right winger took, and their center, Stevenson, would finish with a goal and an assist each. With their 14th win of the season, the Golden Knights sit on, they sit on top of the division as they sit four points ahead of the, or one point ahead of the second place St. Louis Blues as the Knights have played four less games than the Blues. They have four games in pocket. Uh, jumping out to... LA, the Kings were able to face off against the Coyotes and the Coyotes were able to beat the Kings 3-2 to two as all three of their goals came in the second period. And with their 10th win of the season, the Coyotes are currently sitting fifth in the West as they sit six full games behind the first or six full points behind the first place um, Golden Knights. And last but not least, the San Jose Sharks hosted the Colorado Avalanche, and the Avalanche are able to pull off a 4 to nothing win um, as their right winger Rantanen would finish with two goals and two assists. So he was a part of virtually or of basically every scoring play for the Avalanche. And with their 12th win of the season, the Avalanche now are tied with the Wild for the third best record in the West Division as they sit four points behind the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Looking forward to what's going on today, um, staying or at least keeping up with the season with the primetime games at 7 o'clock. The Pittsburgh Penguins will host their in-state rival, the Philadelphia Flyers, on ESPN+. Plus. Um, and that's the only game that's really going to be on primetime. So, of course, I will get back to you with those games when that's done. And shifting my focus all the way out to what's going on in the international soccer sphere, um, starting with the Premier League because there was a good amount of soccer yesterday because there's no Champions League this week. Uh, at Crystal Palace, they hosted Manchester United and they were able to draw with Manchester United, keeping it at 0-0. And with this draw, Manchester United still sits second in the table, but they now trail first place Manchester City by 14 points. Um, and with 11 games left, it looks as though Manchester City might run away with the title, but I mean, anything can happen in the Premier League. Uh, jumping out to the DFB Pokal, which is the German Cup, RB Leipzig was able to beat Wolfsburg 2 to nothing as they will advance to the next round. In Italian Serie A, AC Milan drew with Udinese um, as they were able to tie it up in the 97th minute off of a penalty kick in order to in order to get the one point in the table, in order to save themselves. They now currently sit three points behind first place Inter Milan with one game played, and they now sit four points ahead of Juventus with one more game played, giving Juventus the opportunity to move in closer uh, to that second place spot. Uh, jumping out to Spanish Copa del Rey, after trailing two to nothing in the aggregate, Barcelona was able to beat Sevilla three to nothing. Their third goal coming in extra time, um, as Braithwaite would 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 finish with the ninety fifth minute goal to give Barcelona the advantage so they can advance to the next round. And their second goal came from their their legendary defender Gerard Pique in the ninety fourth minute of regular time to send it into extra time in the first place. And then jumping out to Ligue 1 with the three teams that are sitting at the very top of the division. First, PSG went to Bordeaux and they were able to pull off a one to nothing win. Olympic Lyonnais hosted Stade Rennes and with their own goal in the seven, with their only goal in the seventy fourth minute, they were able to get the three points in the table that they needed. And Lille hosted Marseille and they were able to score two minutes. Or they were, as I'm sorry, their forward David would finish with a 90th minute and a 92nd minute goal uh, to help Lille beat Marseille. And now currently looking at what's going on in Ligue 1 with all three of these teams having one more game played. Lille still, still sits on top of Ligue 1 as they sit two full points ahead of PSG in the table. And PSG now sits one point ahead of Olympic Lyonnais. That's just how close the French... The, uh, that's how close it is at the very top of the French League as, of course... Um, any or any combination of outcomes can lead to one of these teams taking over the very top. That's that's what the French league has really been for the mo for the majority of the season. Looking out to what's going on today uh, at one o'clock, Fulham will host Tottenham as Tottenham look to try to 
see if they can earn their way back into Champions League, even Europa League play. They currently sit with they're current they currently sit eighth in the Premier League and a win here wouldn't really see them move up any, but Ashton Villa has the same amount of points as them as I imagine they still want to keep their spot in the table. And Liverpool's gonna host Chelsea at three fifteen. Liverpool's currently sitting sixth in the table, right behind Chelsea. Um, they have one less point than Chelsea, so of course a win here could see one jump in front of the other. And if West Ham doesn't win their game, one of these teams could very well see themselves jump into fourth place in the Premier League and see themselves secure a Champions League spot. Uh, in Serie A, Parma will host Inter Milan. As with AC's draw, Inter Milan does have an opportunity to create more space within the Italian league. And that's everything that's going on today. Once again, I want to thank everyone for listening to all 30 minutes of this piece. I hope all is well. Once again, today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. And once all of these once all of today's exhibitions are finished, I will get back to you tomorrow on Friday, March 5th, 2021 with another piece. Once again, thank you for listening to all 30 minutes of my piece. I hope all is well and peace out. I'll catch you tomorrow.